Hey, what's up, you guys? It's your girl, Asia, and you're listening to the Closer to God podcast. So on today's episode, we're going to be talking about change. Now, this is a topic that a lot of people like to stray away from because change is scary for most. But make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And if you would like to listen to today's topic, please make sure you stick around, okay? Let's hop right into it. So again, we're going to be discussing the topic of change and change, as I stated, is very, very hard for a lot of people. And I'm not talking about changing your hair, changing your location, um, changing your outfit. I'm talking about changing you, changing who you are for God, because every single person that has ever been born into this world was born into sin. So you're automatically a willfully sinning individual, right? Now, the Bible speaks about training a child up in the way that he or she should go. And that way they would never depart from their ways. A lot of us weren't raised up the proper way. We were raised up in trauma and toxicity and dysfunction and that all became normal to us so then it goes off to play a big part in who we then become the type of friends that we choose the type of partners that we choose the type of decisions and choices that we choose in this thing called life and all of that plays a big part in your upbringing and so this is the reason why within this generation A lot of of people, excuse me, are coming to the term and understanding of breaking generational curses. And all breaking a generational curse is is simply changing and figuring out the way that God wants us to go, figuring out the life that God really genuinely has for us. Because a lot of us make decisions and live our lives based off of what we want to do, how we want to live it, and things never go right because God is not the head of our life. The Bible says to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all things righteous shall be added unto us. How many of us seek God for that job? How many of us seek God first for that partner? How many of us seek God first before we went out buying certain things or doing certain things or taking certain vacations and things turned out maybe okay, but the process was rocky. Or the process was rocky or the situation as a whole was just bad. You have to seek God first. And people don't seem to understand that this is the reason why the world is such a chaotic place. Also because Satan is the prince of the air. Meaning Satan rules the world. Okay. God gave Satan the permission to do so that's the reason why there's so much evil and so much weird behavior going on in today's society that has been going on for years and years and years people want to say well evil has been around forever it has been but there's a time and in, in a point in life where god is saying to us as generational curse breakers we have to be the change if you want to see the change you have to be the change And being the change means we need God all up and down and through them. We can't change nothing on our own. We don't have the ability to stop a curse. Those are just spirits, demonic spirits. We don't have it in us ourselves alone to just go out there and stop doing what our generations and ancestors were doing. We need God. We need God. We need to, we need to seek God for change within ourselves because we are the reason why the change has to occur. We have to find the demons in us release them, reveal them, and then hold ourselves accountable for our poor choices, our poor decision-making skills, and seek God to get back on the right trajectory of this thing called life. People say there is no rule book and there is no God book, and I used to be the same way, and I would say that all the time. There is no no manual to this thing called life. We're just out here trying to wing it. The Bible, the Bible speaks about the ways that we should live. The Bible also speaks about us not touching any of Satan's devices. 
Because once we then begin to touch Satan's devices, Satan has a legal contract to our souls and to our spirits until we really seek God. And even after we seek God, our sin, the bed of sin that we laid in, or we may, we got to lay in that. Because Satan still has a legal contract. Whatever doors we open in our life to lust, to sin, to fornication, adultery, all the things that are not of God and the Bible speaks about, Satan has a legal contract to that. But we have the, the ability once we change our ways, change our life to be pleasing in God's eyes, become born again and live a life of repentance and not willfully out here sinning. Even the doors that Satan has legal authority over, we have the ability to overcome that by by, by praying, fasting, learning the fruits of the spirit, having self-control. And we can overcome that. Satan is going to still throw his, throw his darts and his arrows at us. But the Bible says, no weapon formed shall prosper. The weapons will still be formed, but they shall not prosper. So we must seek change in any and everything that we do in this world. Because we have a, a, a soul on the line. Each and every person, we have a soul on the line. We will have to all bow our knees and stand before God come judgment day. To not believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is because you are choosing not to. Because the word is a clear indication and a clear sign that there is something going on. Satan's time is running out. So we're seeing a lot of evil and weird behavior that is happening and occurring because he is trying to capture as many souls as he possibly can. Because he does not want to be in hell by himself with all his uh, fallen angels. That's the reason why Satan, he, he influenced and convinced all the angels in heaven. And that's the reason why they all came down there with him because he didn't want to be in hell by himself. And that's the reason why we're dealing with these spirits today. Satan and his legions and demons and devils down there, they don't want to do hell by themselves. They're trying to get some old people. Oh, y'all claim to be godly people. We're trying to snatch y'all souls and get you and get you down here in hell with us. Why would any person want to step there and not believe in burning in hell? I don't care if it if it if this all turns out to be the 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 uh the biggest lie ever, which God forbid, and Lord forgive me for this, I know it's not, but I'm just speaking hypothetically. I still want to be on the righteous path because just in case all this turns out to be real, my faith, my endurance in all of these hard times, and my relationship with God will get me to where I'm going and want to go, which is heaven. I don't want to still be out here living wrong and will and, and willfully sinning out here having sex with any and everybody and having babies out of wedlock and 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 doing all this other sinful behavior only for my soul to end up in hell. I'm not doing it. I was doing it. I have a wonderful book out right now called Closer to God. You guys can go check it out. I'll leave it down linked in the description box below. But I don't want, I personally don't want to be in hell. And I don't want anybody around me that I love, that I know, that I don't know, to get their souls sent to hell either. We have to change our ways. We have to learn to take accountability. We can't go out here pointing fingers and playing the blame game all the time. Yeah, we, a lot of us have had some traumatic and dramatic um, upbringings and childhoods. You forgive your parents for that. Now, I always am a big advocate of forgiveness does not mean you have to reconcile with anybody who abused you, misused you, or, or, or treated you poorly. But you find the forgiveness in your heart through seeking God and talking to God. And you move on with your life. You work on healing you because healing you is going to be an everyday choice to be healed and to stay healed. Stop fornicating. Stop being full of lust, masturbation, pornography addictions, clubbing, drinking, smoking weed, getting high. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. This is First Peter verse 5, I mean, chapter 5, verse 8. I'm reading out the King James Version. Be sober, be vigilant, 
because your adversary, the devil, as a warring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Now you take that how you want to take it, but the word is the word. So when you walking around here drunk and high and discombobulated, that's when Satan comes roaring like a lion. Walking around, trying to see who he can devour. When you're caught slacking, because that's when you're high, when you're when you're drunk and you're high, you just your body is just, you're all out of it. And that's when you caught lacking, and that's when Satan's gonna come and attack, just like a lion. All that getting high, trying to, oh, I got to get high to cope with life and deal with people. No, you don't. Baby, we all out here going through things. Oh, well, we was created from, God created weed, not for us to abuse it. Just like God created food, but not for us to sit around here and abuse it and sit up here and just get big and big and big and eat and eat and eat. No. People take things and they abuse things. They try to twist it and manipulate the actual true meaning and foundation of what God has created to make and fit their narrative. Walking around here with black lips and getting rolling up blunts and spending, people spend some money on weed. Rather, it's daily, every other couple of days, every week. People spend money to get high. That's an addiction. Like people spend money out here for crack and cocaine and liquor are addicted. They're so focused on getting high that they're not even focused on God. Those be those super want to be super deep and super woke people walking around here wearing onks on their on their neck and 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 having their sage and crystals. And that's another thing. Let's stop the witchcraft. Because the sage, the zodiacs, all of that is witchcraft. Change your ways. Read the Bible. Seek God. It's in the Bible. You're opening up demonic portals to your life, to your soul, and your soul is on the line. So let's stop it. Let's change this up. It don't take nobody's birthday for you to figure out who your man or your woman is supposed to be. We can't help the day that we was born. We can't help the time that our parents decided to have sex and nine months later we popped out. We can't control that. So why are we comparing our birthdays to trying to find love. You test people's soul. You test people's spirits as the Bible says. Compatibility does not come from zodiacs. It comes from spirits. Beliefs. Heart posture. Are all these things aligned? I don't care nothing about your birthday. Is your spirit aligned with my spirit? Are we equally yoked or are we unequally yoked? Because our birthdays are not going to determine if we're unequally yoked. I don't care how much the, the quality seem to be accurate. Those are just demons. Seek the spirit. Test the spirit. Seek the heart posture. Test the heart posture. I'm, I, I just want us to get better, you guys. We have to change. And we're not, I'm not talking about just changing for, for people. You can never change for a person. Obviously, except for your, if you're married, you need to be changing and evolving. But the change should be changing for God. Making yourself a better, each and every day you should be striving to be a better person and a better version of yourself than, than you were the day before. Weeks before, months before, years before. Changing for a man or for a woman, getting butt injections and lip injections, none of that's going to keep a man. You're changing your exterior, but what about that interior? And even with you changing your exterior and getting all these different types of surgeries, are you able to keep a man? Is that big butt going to sustain hard times? Is that man marrying you? We have to really do better as, as people. As women, as men, all of this debating about what a woman should be doing, what a man should be doing, read the Bible. It's a clear indication about what a man should be and how a woman should be. A woman should be a Proverbs 31 uh, woman. And a husband should love their wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. That's what the Bible says about a man. A man should be a provider. Now, y'all have your own definitions on how y'all want to run your household. But if you want to run it the right, the right way and the righteous way, you'll read this Bible. 
you're going to seek ye first the kingdom of God. I just want us to do better as people. And we have to change. We have to be the generational curse breakers. A curse is all is exactly what it is. Generation from generation. How our parents raised us. How their parents raised them. How their parents' parents raised them. And the list goes on. So many families, especially in the black community. I can't speak for any other race, but I can speak for my race. The black community, a lot of these families be having hidden secrets and hidden motives and hidden agendas and stuff that they want to take to their grave and going back generations and generations ago, family back in the day was sleeping with each other, sleeping with 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 other family members, um, the, the, the sisters, husbands, and boyfriends. It was just a lot of weird stuff going on, a lot of secrets in these families that don't nobody know what was up because this stuff affects who we are. These these spirits that we are here fa- uh, uh, battling with and trying to fight affects us because it goes back generations. If you have a, a, an elder in your family, if you can go back and talk to that elderly woman or that elderly man to get some answers, please do. Because there's a lot of people out who have families like my family, who you have someone who's older in the in the in the in the family, and they have all the answers, but they don't want to say anything. They want to take everything to the grave, keep everything a secret. God does not operate in secrecy. Satan does. Just like God doesn't operate in chaos or confusion, but Satan does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's time out. We need to change. This world needs to change, and it starts with us. We have to be the change. Narcissism is so heavily present in today's society amongst white people black people in our families within our friends some of us is we all have those traits but the one thing i will say is that the bible also mentions to be wise as a serpent but harmless as a dove so sometimes you have to know and have to be able to think and move like how a criminal would or how someone evil will but you don't act on those evil motives and those evil intentions you don't act on it but you'd be very well aware. Peep game, basically. Don't let game be ran on you, but you peep it. You don't you don't play games with other people, but you peep the games and you remove yourself. Always stay prayed up. Read your Bible. Learn some of these scriptures for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Read it for yourself. Quit listening to what your mama, your grandmama, your grandpapa, your, 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 your grandpa who was a pastor. You read that Bible for yourself and get your own understanding. Because people can project a whole bunch of lies and, and, and cherry pick scriptures onto you. Because I know the biggest one that I grew up on is you better honor your mother and your father. Your days will be short. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How is it that I have to get my days shortened, but you are the person who keeps provoking me to anger. So now you're causing me to not want to honor you. Well, the Bible also mentions to not provoke your fathers, not provoke your children to anger or wrath. And that goes with not just fathers, mothers too. Come on now, read that Bible for yourself. Because a lot of our grandparents and all these different elders who are who who hide behind the religion are so quick to sit up there and quote the scriptures that fit their narrative. Well, we have scriptures now to back it up. Once we read it for ourselves and get our own understanding, we can back it up. You're not going to keep on telling me about this Bible, and I ain't even read it for myself yet. I'm going to read it for myself because what you're telling me may be what you got from it, but I'm going to tell you what I got from it, along with the relationship that I now have with God. He's going to always come down and and correct my thoughts, correct what he meant by, well, not correct, but let me know explain to me what he meant with this scripture not what you got out of it because i don't know what kind of spirit you was operating in when you read this but i'm seeking god i'm seeking him first so i can get the righteousness come on now don't 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 play with it we need to change y'all i don't want to make this first episode too long because i understand that I can be very, very passionate about my about my God. And I'm going to stand 10 toes down by my God because I know there's going to be a, a day where I have to stand before him. And I want to make sure that my name is written in the book of life. I want to make sure y'all's name is written in the book of life. You have to seek God and, and get a closer relationship with God with a genuine heart. You must. 
you must walk by faith and not by sight. For faith is the substance of all things unseen. You got to really put all of your trust and belief in the good Lord. I'm still learning that day by day myself. Because Satan is real. Demons are real. Witches and warlocks are real. Spells and curses are real. Evil is real. Narcissists are real. Gaslighting is real. Controlling spirits are real. Monitoring spirits are real. Evil is real. And again, if I could be a help to anybody out there, young, old, it does not matter. I will be a great deal of help. I will help. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and sign off, y'all. I, again, have a book um, called Closer to God in my description box below talking about my testimony and I'll be incorporating my testimony and different things that I've experienced throughout this podcast that I will be um, trying to go forward with and I just want to be again a great help for everybody I want us all to be rejoicing in heaven we're not living in this horrible world going through financial hiccups friendships relationship issues health issues for nothing there is purpose in our pain we must find our purpose first so I love y'all. Make sure you please like, comment, and subscribe and click on that bell to get notified for whenever I post again. And um, I'll see y'all in my next one. Peace.